A warm welcome to all of you watching us today, this Monday evening. Yet another edition of the Spotlight bringing to a story that ignites change in Sri Lanka and around the world. Quality education is the cornerstone uh, of opportunity and progress, uh, shaping minds and transforming lives of people in the country. Now, Wesley College is celebrating its sesquicentennial this year, marking 150 years of academic excellence and institutional achievement. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Mr. Avanka Fernando, the principal of Wesley College, as we commemorate uh, this momentous milestone of its sesquicentennial celebration. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for joining us today, and uh, this year is definitely a milestone for you and the school, the boys, uh, the Old Boys Association as well. Uh, let's start off uh, with the background of Wesley College. Maybe you could share with our viewers, um, the, um, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a premier Christian boys school in Colombo and uh, as far as I know this is also the only boys school run by the Methodist Church in Sri Lanka. Run us through the history of Wesley College, Colombo. Well, Mariela, I would like to uh, take your uh, mind to back in 1814 when Methodist missionaries uh, came to Sri Lanka. On 29th of June, they landed in Sri Lanka. One of the key important things that they really wanted to do is to establish schools in, in Sri Lanka and to provide good education to our children. Uh, through that journey, uh, they were able to establish more than 170 schools. And uh, right now, uh, we have two schools under the Methodist Church, the Boys' School, Wesley College, and the Girls' School, Methodist College. Well, uh, Wesley College started in 1874, 2nd of March, not at the right place that we are, uh, but it was in Dam Street, Pitta. But I think uh, maybe because of the busy uh, environment, uh, Reverend Henry Highfield uh, shifted the college in 1906 to Karshu Gardens, where we have the college right now. So uh, over the past 149 years, the college has been uh, producing a lot of gentlemen to the country and to the world as well. So happy to celebrate the Sesquicentennial Centennial Year. That's right, sir. And let's talk about the motto of Wesley College. Is What's the story behind it? Is there any special meaning that comes along with it? Yes, so uh, our motto goes as All Right Labora. Uh, however, the meaning goes as uh, Pray and Work or Pray and Labor. Uh, because since we are under the Methodist Church and we do have a Christian background as well, so we want to make sure that uh, we inculcate the Christian values in our children and to make sure that irrespective of the religion, you know, we believe in our God and uh, pray and work and to make sure that uh, we accomplish our objectives in life. Um, so is it correct that Wesley College is founded on the British public schools tradition? Absolutely, because the origin uh, of the Methodist Church uh, is from the uh, UK uh, because uh, uh, Reverend John Wesley, only, uh, you know, I would say the, the forefathers of the Methodist Church and uh, because of that origin, uh, the missionaries came to Sri Lanka from UK and uh, we have a UK uh, origin and uh, we have certain uh, traditions and even when it comes to the, the architectural structures of the college, we do have a certain link with the uh, UK as well. Uh, so a lot of uh, Wesleyites uh, are very proud about the building of college. What is so special about it? Well, it's quite unique. Uh, yes. If you come to the college, especially the main hall, we have a very unique structure and uh, especially, I mean, a lot of Wesleyites do, uh, uh, proud, they are very proud about uh, the main hall and especially the ceiling and the structure and everything is quite unique. So uh, even the landscape, if you come to the college, uh, it's quite unique and uh, I mean, from the outer appearance, it's very difficult to figure out whether you have a school, when you go inside, it's a different uh, well for our children as well. So that's why a lot of Wesleyites are quite proud and happy to say that they are Wesleyites. That's right. And now Wesley, uh, Wesley College has also expanded. There are three campuses as well. Let's talk a little bit about that as well. Yes. In 2019, uh, nine, sorry, I'm sorry, uh, 2009, uh, we started uh, with uh, the first branch in Havelock Town and then uh, we shifted to Temple as well. So basically, uh, most of the children who come to Wesley uh, are from either Nigambo or Katnaik, that area, or else from all to see uh, Mount Lavinia, uh, the Hivale area. So, the church and the college administration took a decision that we will expand 
then it will be uh, quite convenient for the children and give more opportunity for the kids as well. And uh, so we have two branches. It's like a feeder school where it feeds for uh, the main school in grade six uh, after completing grade five. So we have one branch in Tampere and one branch in Havelock Town as well. Uh, you are also a proud Wesleyite, uh, your alma mater. What p made you get into the role of education uh, as an educator and what made you pursue this career as a principal? I can't even call it a career because it's also a service towards children as well. But let's talk about your educational background in terms of this. Yes, I do uh, say that I'm proud to be a Wesleyite. Well, my move into education was a coincidence which I never expected, honestly. Really? Uh, yeah. So, uh, in uh, 2009, uh, I was invited uh, to uh, replace one of the teachers who went on, a, uh, who wants to go with uh, her daughter abroad. Mm. And then I came uh, to replace her for a couple of months. And then after that, my own principal, Mr. M. P. Fernando, wanted me to join the staff since there was a vacancy. So I came to the college and it was my almost the second home. So I fell in love with teaching. But before that, I've been uh, you know, teaching in the Sunday school uh, in our church. And uh, the teaching was there in my, in my, I would say, my self. So then I fell in love with the college and teaching with the kids. So continue the, uh, the career as a teacher. And uh, while I've been in the college, I completed my bachelor's in science. And then after that, uh, in 2014, I got the opportunity to do my master's in the UK. And I went uh, uh, in 2014, completed my master's and came back. Uh, well, uh, if I talk about my journey, so I joined as a staff member. Then in the age of 24, I became the headmaster of the 10 11 section. And then uh, while I was in the UK, uh, uh, I got the opportunity to be appointed as the co -vice principal, one of the co-vice principals of the college and then I returned back in 2015 and uh, in 2016 I was appointed as the vice principal of the college I was just 28 and uh, in 2017 apparently uh, the church requested me whether I can take over the college because there was a uh, uh, you know, shift in the college and at the age of 29 I had to take over the college in 2017. Would you consider yourself one of the youngest principals in history or? <laughs> well, I don't have uh, exact information to prove it, but I hope uh, <laughs> do so uh, because uh, even I had several experiences like uh, people won't believe that when I say I'm the principal of the college. So I think maybe the youngest principal. But that is a great inspiration to the young boys as well because sometimes uh, in society they think, oh, you're too young to be this, or you're too young to be that, but you're breaking that uh, myth. So that's a great uh, story as well. But off air, we were just speaking just before we started how important it is to be to stay connected to what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. And now since you are dealing with children starting from kindergarten, uh, you know, they transition from grade one to five, seven, then A levels. How do you stay connected to the children? Sometimes, you know, children might be going through so many issues at home. Yeah. How do you strike that balance uh, between being a good listener or being a principal? Sometimes it might be difficult. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a very challenging uh, concept that uh, we need to manage. Well, when it comes to running a school, uh, what we need to understand uh, we need to provide a holistic education. Now, in the, uh, when it comes to holistic education, it is not all about book pen education, but uh, understanding children and communicating with them, and especially uh, teachers and parents, both are there for children. So one of the biggest drawbacks that I see, uh, we miss this equation. Uh, so when it comes to myself, I really wanted to get engaged with the children. and. Uh, they, they look forward for their principal and their teachers and probably their school leaders as well. So I need to lead the children with example. And uh, I think over the past uh, couple of years, what I really wanted to do to make sure that I am with the children because then I can understand them. Otherwise, as much as you create a gap between the children and the administration or the staff, uh, that's where we fall down. So uh, in my, uh, my style, I really wanted to be more of a, uh, I would say, uh, a diplomatic and democratic leader, give the opportunity for the kids as well. And one of the most important thing that we should do is to listen to our kids. 
because in Sri Lankan education system what we see which is not happening we are not listening to our children and um, uh, you know we are more of a bossy type of a you know education system where we tell the children what to do but sometimes when you listen to the children they might come up with some brilliant ideas which we never thought about it. and sometimes uh, they see the the I would say the macro things yeah. more than us so um, it's quite important that uh, we move with the children and we should understand them and sometimes we have to go to their level as well you know even though we are adults if we can't go to their level uh, of understanding them and their needs and uh, who they are i think uh, we What's will fail the point? yes so in in the whole the whole education system in sri lanka we need a, a some sort of a transformation so even transforming children from youngsters to adults is part of the the sri lankan education system that belongs to the the, the schools as well and teachers principals they are supposed to uh, you know do that as well so that's where i stand when it comes to the education system in sri lanka now wesley college is also known uh where they promote strong values and very good discipline as well from a very young age how do you do that well it's a tough task uh, especially in a boys school exactly uh, but uh, one of the key things that we really wanted to do to empower the primary school education because uh, when you come to when when you when you consider the education uh, in a school you have three segments you have the primary school the middle school and the senior school it's quite difficult for you to transform a child in the senior school because you need to get the right foundation in the uh, uh, the primary school uh, so you should not allow them to wait until they come to the senior school to do the transformation so the most important thing is that you should have a strong foundation in the primary school that includes uh, discipline understanding uh, and the personality development and uh, likewise so what we do we we spend a lot of time with the primary school children and to make sure that they are been molded because for example if i ask you you can remember what you did in primary school because because whatever you absorb in the primary school will get deposited yeah and That's it's like a concrete but if i ask myself if i can remember what i did yesterday sometimes i might not remember because we were overloaded but whatever we, whatever things that went to our mind in the primary school is quite solid so if we put the right thing in the primary school that includes discipline values and everything so it it goes on you know it it will be there throughout the life so primary school and middle school is quite important and then only the the the, the ch- changes do happen with their physical emotional and social changes that children do face with their age so primary education is quite important and uh, with that only we uh, you know we move forward now when we often say wesley college a lot of people say double blue why is is there a, a great story behind this in terms of sports music the arts when you they say oh we are the double blue fr- uh, fraternity yeah. is there a story yeah it's like it? a i would say a trademark i would say okay uh so uh double blue i mean uh, the the two blues that we use are oxford and cambridge blue and uh, most of the pa- past principals were from either they are scholars from uh, oxford uh, university or cambridge university and that's one of the reasons why we uh, one of the reasons why we highlight as double blue in the meantime uh, it in, it uh, highlights the sky and the waters that means we don't have any uh, barrier because we are we are open for everyone and that's one of the reasons why we call as double blues and uh, uh we are very proud of it as well now wesley college has also been one of the schools one of the first schools to head into the smart classroom uh projects and all of that how is it going so far well i mean uh it's really uh interesting to see how the kids are moving into that uh you know world of education with smart classrooms so uh we have almost completed the uh, 80% of the uh, classes uh, with smart boards in which year did the uh, we started in 2017 right and then we moved from primary school to the middle school and then the senior school there's only one section to be completed well uh, why we wanted to move into smart i would say world of you know education or the classrooms because uh, 
the, the, the present children are living in that world. So if we are not catering the need of the children, I think we are still going back to 1960s, 50s, where the, the, the traditional classrooms are like in the past. Uh, so we have been uh, working on that very much. And uh, I think COVID uh, pandemic helped us a lot. Really? Uh, because uh, then the, the teachers were also, you know, forced to move into that right. uh, yeah. concept as well because we had no other option. option. So I think in a way, we took it in a very positive way during the COVID pandemic. So we wanted to make sure that uh, the smart teaching and classrooms have been done properly. But there were like, you know, technical issues that everywhere we had it because some, I mean, since this is something uh, quite new to Sri Lanka, uh, some, you know, couldn't uh, cope up the changes and sometimes it was challenging and sometimes you had to learn new things. But anyway, I think we had a very positive uh, feedback from the, the teachers as well. But I think uh, as a school, we are very happy to say that uh, we have completed most of our classrooms and we are heading to that type of uh, education in the future as well. Since its inception, uh, Wesley College is known for its simplicity in things and you all are also known to be very open and welcoming to everyone. And um, you know, you all also promote good ethnic harmony in school. How do you promote inclusivity in college? Well. Uh, it's up to the administration, especially the principal and the teachers, because end of the day, if you take the, the Wesley community, we have children from all backgrounds. I mean, that was the, the concept of Methodism and the missionaries who came to Sri Lanka when they established schools around Sri Lanka. That was one of the main, main uh, key elements that they wanted to uh, do, because uh, they don't want to uh, you know, cater to the high end, mm. but to everyone, you know, starting from the the bottom to the top. So as a college, we are very much uh, keen on this, uh, I would say, harmony among the children. And we have children coming from uh, all religions, races, ethnicities, because that's the life that we want to promote. And especially, uh, I want to highlight during the, uh, uh, when this Easter bombing happened. Yes. Uh, there were concerns among the parents, among children, but I think uh, our boys were like, was one. I mean, we, we were not even bothered about the religion, but we were bothered about Wesleyites. Because when you keep on talking about it, only it becomes a problem. So we, we want to make sure that we, you know, we won't talk about it. And if you, if, you, uh, if, I, if I share an example, a uh, couple of years back, one of our choir leader was a, a Muslim boy. Right. So they sing in the church, but it doesn't matter because we are obviously, it's, you know, it's not about the religion or the race or the caste or the creed or whatsoever, because we want to make sure that we are unique and we have that peace and harmony, which where I feel like even the country needs. Yes. And we are promoting that in school because that's, that's what we need for the future. Welcome back to the show of this week's edition of The Spotlight. Well, at this moment, uh, Wesley College is celebrating 150 years. What is going through your mind as the incumbent uh, principal of Wesley College? And you are also interested with the responsibility of upholding the traditions and legacy of you know, the founding fathers of uh, you know, Reverend Highfield and Reverend James Cartman. How do you feel? Do you, well, feel under, do you feel like you're under pressure? <laughs> yes, true. And in the meantime, I'm very happy and proud yeah. as well. Because uh, it's a very rare opportunity for you uh, when you lead your own school to be the principal of, uh, uh, of this SQ set in the year. Uh, well, I mean, uh, our main objective of our celebration is to make sure that, you know, our children will you know, absorb something to their life. Along with that, that uh, we want to see how we can serve our nation as well. So uh, we have a lot of plans uh, moving on with uh, the celebration and hoping that we will be able to celebrate our anniversary in a, in a grand scale. But uh, in the meantime, as I mentioned, you know, inculcate good values to our children and as well as to see how we can serve our nation as a school. So happy to be uh, the principal of the college. So this is all about celebrations. How are you all preparing? What are the events that have been lined up for the year? Anything uh, special? Yes, I mean, we have quite a number of things happening. Um, and I need to uh, 
I, I will I will uh, share few things that Definitely. I would say significant things. One of the key projects that we wanted to do is to uh, support 150 underprivileged schools in Sri Lanka. Uh, well, this concept came to me in 2018 when we celebrated our Children's Day uh, by inviting a school uh, from Matugama. And this gave me uh, some sort of emotional feeling. Why not? You know, we have about 10,000 of children, uh, school, schools in Sri Lanka. However, uh, if you take the uh, take all the schools, uh, we were wondering like how many schools do have basic facilities. So that pushed me to uh, have a project like this. Uh, so our target is to complete 150 schools by end of this uh, year. In the meantime, uh, we want to make sure that our boys have been trained well before they leave to the society after school, completing 13, 13 years of education. So we have a lot of programs lined up when it comes to career guidance and other work. And in the meantime, we want to empower the teachers as well, uh, because at the end of the day, they are the ones who you know, mold and uh, direct children to, towards their objectives in life. And uh, the, OB, oh, the Old Boys Union uh, mm. been involved very much with the celebration as well. And uh, they have been doing a lot of pro projects. And uh, I think especially I just want to mention that they have decided to uh, renovate the college pavilion, which is uh, like the Lady of Karshu Gardens okay. or the Campbell Park, I would say. And uh, the credit goes to the Old Boys Union. Likewise, we have a lot been lined up, and this uh, next week we will be having our Founders' Day uh, assembly on 1st of March. Then second, we have the uh, 150th anniversary walk, uh, followed by the one-day cricket encounter between Westy College and St. Benix College. And then on um, 3rd of March, we'll be having our Founders' Day service at our college chapel to thank God for what uh, he has done over the past 150 years. And then on 16th of March, we'll be having a concert at Nilum Pukuna because when it comes to Wesley, music is in our blood. So uh, we'll be uh, you know, showcasing the talent of our kids on 16th of March. And then uh, throughout the year, we'll be having different uh, events, programs to celebrate our Cisco Centennial. In terms of creativity and innovation, how do you give platforms to the students uh, for them to showcase their talent and abilities to school, to teachers, parents and to the world at large? Well, uh, we do organize quite a number of programs throughout the year. Uh, creativity means not all about the, the handwork that you do, but it's all about like how you perform as an individual. Uh, so we give opportunity for the kids to, you know, sometimes even conduct assembly. So they will be improving in, the, in their public speaking. In the meantime, uh, in certain sections, we do conduct uh, exhibitions where our children can do their own products. And annually, we do have a program called IT Innovators, where in, in different age categories, they can, uh, uh, you know, have their own product displayed. And we'll be getting external judges and children will be awarded uh, different, different gifts uh, depending on their performance. In the meantime, uh, uh, we started uh, uh, some uh, on, on a very special uh, project called uh, The Chronicle of Wesley, where we started this project uh, six years back to uh, publish a book on the history of the college. So uh, in that book, uh, we have given the opportunity for a kid to do a pencil drawing uh, of the main uh, college building where we feel like he, it may be a lifetime opportunity for him to uh, you know, have his own drawing in the book. So likewise, we have uh, quite a number of uh, programs organized for our children to uh, get their exposure and as well as to brush up their you know, skills and to improve their talent. Now, in terms of your journey, what have been some of your most uh, significant accomplishments uh, as an educator, as a school leader, a principal? Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, I mean, uh, there are quite a number of things and especially I want to highlight, you know, moving from the traditional classroom into a smart classroom was one of the key things that I really want to implement because the experience that I got uh, when I was in UK, I really want to bring it to Wesley. And uh, with that, I think we have done, uh, we have moved a uh, long way ahead of us because uh, uh, the children are living in that uh, world, as I mentioned. So we, I wanted to uh, give them that the op uh, give them that opportunity to you know improve their uh, knowledge and understanding about subjects using smart classrooms. In the meantime, um, uh, when it comes to extracurricular activities, uh, I really want to highlight the 
the, the drama, uh, debating, and other extracurricular activities. I mean, the boys have been performing well over the past couple of years. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I think after after a very, very long time, we were able to start cadeting back again at Westy right. because we were one of the first few schools who started cadeting in Sri Lanka. No. We due to, yes. For unfortunately, uh, due to certain reasons, yeah. uh, it has been stopped. But uh, uh, last year, we were able to start uh, cadeting. And uh, I was able to start about uh, four to five new sports at Wesley, where we have uh, champion athletes uh, in those uh, sports as well, mentioning a few. Uh, the weightlifting, the rowing, uh, the boxing uh, boys who have been doing well uh, are some of the highlights that I really want to uh, mention. So Wesley College is onto great things. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the other, um, I, I'm, I don't think I should be saying services, but what are the other opportunities uh, you give the students in terms of the arts? Uh, now you said you have added five new sports as well. Yeah. Um, what more does the school offer for the students? Well, uh, apart from those, we give them the opportunity to get the exposure. For example, attending to uh, different conferences and then maybe programs and career guidance programs. And likewise, there are a lot of opportunities for the, the kids. Uh, and in the meantime, one of the things that I really want to uh, do is to give the children the opportunity to engage with the college administration and to discuss things and to give their ideas as well. Because what I feel uh, when it comes to managing a school, it is not uh, good for the teachers and the principal to run the school, but we need to make sure that the children are also included uh, in the administration as well. But they are not in the decision-making thing, but we would like to listen to them, their ideas. So we have a, a separate body called Students Forum, right. where the senior prefect will be uh, leading the forum, where once a month we meet and discuss, and they bring up some brilliant ideas sometimes, which we never thought about it. And because of that, uh, it will en enlighten us uh, with uh, the need of uh, the children. So we might then we might be able to, you know, improve with our facilities and whatever the things that we need to provide the children. I mean, it will be a, it's it's a good opportunity for the kids as well to, you know, you know, um, challenge the administration. Even so I'm saying we need this. This is something that you need to do, not in a very negative way, but in a very uh, positive way to make sure that you know. They, they, they will be part of the, the administration as well. As a Wesleyite, whether past or present, uh, there is a unique feature and no matter from where they are, if it's a sport event, is a sport event, a musical event or whatever, I've noticed it as well personally, uh, this is the war cry. Okay. So let's, what is so special about this because I see them um, it's something that brings all together, whether they are a past Wesleyite or a student, they still come together just to say those few words. Why is this, why are the Wesleyites so passionate about this? Well, I think the main reason because we only have a war cry as a school. The only school I in Sri Lanka. So. I think so, according to my knowledge. I have never seen, yeah. to be honest. So. And uh, this has a bit of a uh, long history. Uh, this was introduced by uh, our former principal, uh, Reverend James Cartman. Um, it has an African link. So uh, it's a, a, a war cry used by Zulu tribe in Africa. So uh, according to our uh, information, um, Reverend James Cartman has visited and he has found this, uh, I would say, the war cry. And he wanted to introduce to Wesley as well. Uh, zam zam zage, you know, yeah. it goes as zam zam zage, as zam yeah. zam say, ishiba ishiba hua he. And he has uh, told the senior prefect to, uh, you know, share it among the children and to make it a, a tradition that uh, wherever we meet as Wesleyites, this war cry will be some, uh, is, a, is something significant that we shout out as proud Wesleyites wherever we meet. Brilliant. And it, it screams so much of passion. And even if you are not a Wesleyite, you feel like Wesleyite. So I think that's the speciality of that as well. Um, okay, in terms of the future prospects of Wesley College, after 150 years are celebrated, what more do you hope to achieve with the school? Well, uh, our main objective is to see how we can move along with the society and the world. Because at the end of the day, uh, we have to cater the need of the world and the country 
and uh, we just want to make sure that we move and improve day by day, move forward and uh, to see how we can change our education system. Because what I believe that uh, the Sri Lankan education system needs uh, a massive reform and uh, we need uh, children to be molded and shaped to the need of the society and uh, so with, uh, with our plans ahead of us we want to make sure that uh, we move forward with uh, the, the, the need of the world. We are on the final run for this uh, evening on this week's edition of the Spotlight, bringing to you a story that ignites change. We are in conversation with the principal of Fisley College, Mr. Avanka Fernando. So this is the part where you don't have to be that modest about yourself, uh, but you are a very, very skilled photographer and you have received numerous awards. I think about two days ago, your, one of your photographs were featured on the BBC as well. How do you balance the time? Because being a photographer, you have to constantly be on the move as well. Being a principal of three campuses is also not an easy task. How does it all work? Well, it's a, a massive challenge, I would say. And uh, especially do, when, we do, when you do wildlife photography, you have to go out. Sometimes you have to spend a lot of time uh, capturing the, the image that you really want to do. Well. Uh, so what I do usually, whenever I get a you know, free space in my calendar or my free sp uh, time for me, I just move out and uh, see what I can you know, capture. And uh, over the past uh, five, six years, I've been traveling uh, around the country in different places, trying to capture the beauty of uh, the nature. And my main object is to uh, showcase the beauty of our country to the world and the uniqueness of our nature because we have a beautiful country. Uh, I mean, if we, if we uh, capitalize on that beauty, I think we as a country, we can move along ahead of us uh, and to make sure that this country is a better place for all of us to live together. Uh, so that's my main object in, uh, in, in uh, doing wildlife photography. So somehow, I, since I love it, yeah, it's my part of my passion that I want to uh, do, uh, so I somehow find time and move out. This, the recent uh, picture that received an award, uh, you said you had seen it in an afternoon, during an afternoon, during lunch or to that yes. effect. Yes, actually uh, uh, this was a picture taken in the gar college garden. Really? Uh, yeah. Yet and again, Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> and this was uh, submitted to the International Garden Photograph of the Year competition and it won the wildlife uh, in the garden category. So uh, basically, one I mean, during COVID, I saw some squirrels were like you know moving across the uh, the, the green, and they bend uh, the grass and eat the, the seeds uh, so nicely. So I wanted to take a low angle picture, and tried for a couple of weeks, failed many times because whenever I go, they run away. Yes. But uh, one day I, I was I was doing some work in my bungalow in the office room, and I saw them you know moving on, on the fence. So I thought, why not try again? And took the camera, went and hit myself in a place. And not even half an hour, uh, the squirrel came and started eating the grass. So I captured the image so, and submitted and won the category. Won the category. Yeah. What are some of the other awards or achievements in terms of photography you have uh, achieved over the past few years? Well, over the past, uh, I would say I started submitting images uh, starting from 2020 onwards. So over the past uh, four years, I have submitted for a couple of uh, many, many competitions and I have won about almost close to 100 awards. And Hun 100 awards. Close to 100 <laughs> awards. And uh, some of the key uh, achievements were like uh, in 2021, I won the uh, second place in the black and white category in the World Nature Photography Awards. And then um, uh, there's another competition in the uh, United, United States of America called uh, Wildlands Magazine Competition. So uh, thrice I won awards in that. The first was in uh, 2020, I won the third place in the mammals category. But this year I won the macro category, which I, uh, the picture that I took was from Singaraja of a green white snake. 
and uh, there are many awards I have won and hoping to uh, continue to uh, bring credit to the, the country and glory to the country you know, because of the beautiful nature that we have. As a principal, how do you, um, how do you, time, how do you find time for yourself to relax? I know photography is one. So somehow I uh, find time because it's all about how you manage your time. Uh, I mean, since I love it, I somehow find time because uh, it's a tough job because when it comes to uh, running a school as a principal, it's a 24-hour job and sometimes you have to be on the campus and throughout the whole year. So uh, because of the passion that I do have, somehow I find time. It's tough, but whenever I find the time, move out and I would say go to the wild and take pictures. Yeah. How do you deal with the stress? There might be days where you know people will be coming to you with so many problems and you can't snap back either. How do you deal with the pressure? Well, Because uh, you're the... listening to problems sometimes yes. all day long. Students are coming, parents on one side, teachers on the other side and you have to remain calm and composed as well. Mainly through photography because really? uh, whenever I go out, you know, I just want to relax and enjoy. And in the meantime, you know, music is one of the other things that I really want to do. And uh, somehow uh, uh, it, it comes with the experience as well because, I mean, if, if you know how to handle a situation and if you know how to tackle the problem, you might be able to, you know, have a you know, a better, better uh, position. So, photography, music is uh, are, are two things that I really do to you know relax and enjoy life as well. So, my final question, it's not a question per se, but what would you want to tell everyone watching us today? As Wesley is also going, celebrating 150 years, okay. a story, your motto for life, anything? Well, uh, I every time say, uh, you know, we need to make sure that we educate our children. The education is the key element in a country. And as a country, I think uh, we need to uh, invest and uh, spend a lot of time educating our kids because depending on education, it will uh, define the future of the country. Uh, I really want to you know, highlight uh, the statement, a statement done by uh, uh, Nelson Mandela. It says, education is the best weapon to change the world. Uh, as well. So, if, if we can invest on education, if we as uh, citizens, if we can educate our kids uh, how to mold their lives uh, to be better citizens, and I would say gentlemen, leaders, I think as a country we will be successful. And uh, that's my message uh, for all the viewers. Education is one of the key elements that we can change a country, change the world even. And if you are focusing on it, uh, particularly uh, with a proper objective, I think we might be able to achieve uh, uh, what we are planning for the future as well. So thank you very much for joining us today and as Wesley College is celebrating 150 years, uh, we uh, from ITN want to wish you and the school nothing but the best and wishing you all that so that you are going to even greater heights in terms of education, uh, the arts, everything. Related. Wishing you and the school nothing but the absolute best and thank you for joining us today on this week's edition of The Spotlight. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity as well. Alright, so that brings us to the end of yet another edition of The Spotlight. This week we were in discussion with the principal of Wesley College Colombo, Mr. Avanka Fernando, to celebrate the 150 years of the school. Join me again next Monday, same time, same place. Until we meet again, stay safe and have a pleasant night.